Emulation is really the best way to preserve old games. So I do it for the history of it all. No, I do it to play all these old games. All these games I've got over here on my shelf and this. I don't even have a Famicom, but I've got that on the, the, the Super Famicom. Um, I want to be able to play all those games in one interface and I want to be able to do it on my computer or any computer that I move to. So I have a separate computer set up with a CRT, but it's a nice fancy computer so I can play all my DOS games with all the different options. Because if you were to build a computer for old retro gaming and for DOS or something like that, you would have one option of sound card, one option of mini interface, one option of this and that and the other. But with emulation, you can simulate a number of different MIDI interfaces, a number of different clock speeds, a number of different CPUs. So I think we should all be using RetroArch and a number of other emulators on our PC to preserve the memory and the fun of these old games. You gotta activate Windows because I know you want the dark theme and also the customization options that go along with it. Plus you'll be able to get some updates that are not available unless you activate. So head over to whokeys.com, it's where I grab my keys. You can get Windows 11, but you know what? Windows 10 Pro right now, it'll update to Windows 11. So check out Windows 10 Pro. They've also got Office 2019, you can grab that. You've got Windows 10 Home if you want. And I've got a coupon code for 30% off until the end of the year. So if you need Office and Windows 10, you can get them together right here in a pack and save some money. I'm gonna go ahead and add this to my shopping cart. Click here, proceed to checkout, and right here we can do a coupon code, TS30, hit apply. If you're watching this video after the end of the year, you can use TS25 to get 25% off, but I'll take the 30 right now because hey, Q4, everything's on sale. Once you're finished, if you want to access your key, you click on your name on the top right, click on user center, and you'll see my purchase orders. Right here, you'll be able to view the keys that you've purchased just by clicking on view keys and codes. Then you will see your code right here. Just go ahead and copy this code, press start, type activate, and you'll see activation settings come up. Click on that, then click change product key. Right there, you can paste in your code and hit next, and then you will be activated. It's very simple. So go ahead and get Windows and Office activated and do it at the same price as the wholesalers do it. So what we're gonna cover in this video is all the different cores that come with RetroArch. Now, when you first look at the interface, it can seem a little bit intimidating, and just note that it's a lot easier to use the interface if you're using a controller. You can see here I have two interfaces. Normally when you open it up, you're just gonna get this interface here. But if you press the F5 button on your computer, you'll also get the PC interface. Now, unfortunately, a lot of the options are not here, but it's a much faster way to browse through your library of games uh, so that you can pick something. If you were to you know, browse through the library of games over here, it can be very slug. See, I'm like scrolling right now. It's taken me forever, oh God. There's all my images, oh look at that. Sorry, I'm hyper, I'm drinking this stuff. I spill my drink! We're gonna break it down this way. I'm gonna talk about the cores that I use on a beefy computer, and then I'll also mention, hey, if you need a little bit more performance, you can also use a, this other core. So I'll, I'll try to tell you which cores are better for performance so that you can use it on some older hardware. But this is really the set of cores that I think most of us should be using on our desktop PCs. Now, I want to note that if you go online, you'll see lots of people uh, yelling and screaming about one core over the other, or this is the best thing for Super Nintendo, and a lot of them are right from their perspective. So this is a very general uh, view, and these, recommend, these recommendations I'm going to give you will totally get you playing all these old games with very minimal input lag, and you'll be able to start having some fun. I have to plug in the dongle! Plug in the dongle, you dingus! Generic 360 pad configured, there we go. So now, in order to get to all of the different cores, go down to Online Updater and press your button, your action button, your go button, whatever you have mapped to that. Then go to core. <laughs> gore to core downloader! <laughs> okay, I turned into a death metal, uh, typical cockney pirate. Let's start off with, well, I'm not gonna cover everything. like. Amstrad, there's only a couple different choices here, and I haven't tried them because I don't play Amstrad games, so I'm sorry about that. Don't play ZX Spectrum either, but whatever. When it comes to arcade games, there's one king. That is Final Burn Neo. It plays the most games with the most performance. So I've totally stopped using MAME unless I absolutely need it, because Final Burn Neo will play just about everything that I throw at it. There, I'll make this bigger so we can see it. So Final Burn Neo is my answer for 
basically all my arcade ne needs and it also plays the Neo Geo arcade games. It's called Neo not because of Neo Geo but because, I don't know, I guess new. So that's the one. I've got these other ones, CPS2 and CPS3 downloaded. I don't need them. I only need Neo because it also plays my Capcom games just fine. So I don't have any MAME installed. Don't need it. For Atari, um, for the 2600 I'm using Stella. I don't really play the 5200. But, you know, there's only one option for that. For Jaguar, you've got the Virtual Jaguar. Uh, Beetle Lynx. Uh, Beetle stuff is usually very accurate. So whenever you see this, just know it's generally going to be pretty accurate. They have a very high standard. All right, don't play the Wonder Swan. Does anyone play the Wonder Swan? <laughs> and then for my Amiga, I've got the PUAE core installed for the Amiga. And for the Commodore 64, I'm just using Vice X64. If you need something a little faster, there's a fast version and an accurate version. So you can pick either one of those you like. If you're playing Commodore 64 games, for me they haven't really aged well, so that's what I that's what I use. If you're playing Doom, PR Boom is your only core option. I usually prefer to play Doom uh, using Z Doom outside of the emulator, but if you want to play this on a TV screen with a controller, this is a great way to do it. It'll also allow you to load some wads. Okay, DOSBox. There's a few different versions of DOSBox, and there's the newest version called DOSBox Pure. Let's go ahead and dive in and take a look at what you can do with DOSBox Pure. And I've already made a total video on DOSBox Pure, so if you want to use uh, DOS emulation in, in this, I recommend looking at my other video. I'll show you exactly how it all works, but for now, let's just load up a DOS game. So you just press the button to load it up. I'm going to hit run. It'll ask me which core you want to use if you've installed multiple. DOSBox Pure. Now it's going to open up in a window. So DOSBox Pure, what it does is it goes through and it searches for all the executable files here and then brings them up in an interface like this. I guess I'll go ahead and make it big so you can see it better. And instead of actually having to type things in, we can just use our controller and go down and click on, uh, let's see here. There's Alone in the Dark. Sometimes it's nice to click on Install, you know, and then you can pick your, your devices and stuff like that. You can pick your audio devices or whatever. I'm just going to go up here and click on that. There we are. Now this works with your keyboard. There's a lot of hotkeys on your keyboard. So if you press the scroll lock button, it will lock the game. This is your scroll lock. There we go. See, it says game focus on. Now when game focus on, none of your hotkeys will work at all. So you have to turn off scroll lock and able to be able to press your quick save button, which is another hotkey. And this is one of the beautiful things about this version of DOSBox. It supports quick save, which none of the other versions of DOSBox do. This one is a beautiful core. Thank you so much, DOSBox Pure developers. This thing is awesome. So anyway, we go ahead and hit enter here. Play this game for a little while. Scroll lock, game focus on. Now, if you need to go in and change things, you have to turn scroll lock, game focus off, then you can press the home button on your controller, and you can actually come down and change a lot of your core options right here. You can change like, you know, timings, you can change the type of CPU you're using. Oh, I'm using a Pentium 100. This is all stuff that's beyond the scope of this video, but I've already made a video about it. So go watch my DOS uh, emulation, my DOSBox Pure emulation video. All right, let's get back to the other course. I've got Flashback, but you know what? I think Flashback's just better to play straight off GOG or something like that, and it's whatever. I'm skipping some of these that I don't use much, and hopefully most people out there don't use them much, but a lot of times there's only one choice when it comes to like the Magnavox Odyssey 2 or something like that. The MSX, there we go. This will get your MSX uh, games up and running. Okay, when it comes to the PC Engine and also the Super Graphics, that's if you're in America, the Turbo Graphics, Turbo Graphics 16, Turbo CD, and all that kind of stuff. There are a few different options here. Now, Beetle is going to be the most accurate one. So you get the NEC PC Engine Super Graphics CD Beetle. That'll play everything right here with the most accuracy. If you need a little bit more speed, try this one. But if you just want accuracy, this one's good to go. Um, and then for some Super Graphics games, I found that this one works a little faster. So I've got all these installed and I use them with different games. I, I mostly use the PC Engine Super Graphics, the Beetle Super Graphics. I mostly use that core just for my Super Graphics games. And then I pretty much use this for all the other uh, Turbo Graphics, Turbo Graphics CD and that kind of stuff. And then if it's running a little slow, you can use the Beetle PCE fast. So a few different options there. NEC uh, PC8000 only has one option. And then we have the PC98. Now, if you're going to be playing uh, there's a lot of uh, Japanese, I guess there's a lot of Irogi games on there, but there's a lot of um, a lot of hentai games on there too. But if you want to play those games, and there's a lot of just, you know, narrative games. I think Snatcher came out on the PC-98 first, but they're in Japanese. So if you read Japanese and you want to play some of these games, uh, I recommend 
Neko Project 2 Kai. That's the one that runs the best. And there's also some, if you want to play like a game that's very similar to Castlevania, except I, I call it Sexy Castlevania, it's a, a game called Rusty. I recommend that you load it up here. So I'll show you what that looks like. All right, we're loading up uh, Rusty. Now, if you look for translated games, you can find a bunch of translated games for the PC-98, and they're all pretty cool. Let's go ahead and... There we go. Little C Lab. Oh yeah, it's a keyboard game, I keep forgetting. You have to, you'll have to manually map the keys. Thanks for the, to whoever translated this thing. Yeah, let's just let's go. Do these things, oh shit. It's quite a bit blockier compared, but you know, anyway. There is the PC-98 running just fine. If you want to check out a bunch of um, games, I didn't tell you this, but you can check on archive.org for um, translated HDI. That's the, the file uh, extension that you're looking for for PC-98 games. Now we're going to get into Nintendo. If you're going to be playing 3DS, Citra is basically the only thing that you got. If you want to try the older version, you can, but this is the, the current version. So Citra is for 3DS games. And you'll have to do a jump through a few hoops to get games to work in Citra. But that's beyond the scope of this video. Could be an entire different video just for that. All right, so the DS. Um, I don't really play many DS games, so this is what I'm using, and it works great. Now, when it comes to Game Boy, I've got this installed, but there's one that'll play just about everything. You can just use the MGBA core for Game Boy Advance, Game Boy, and Game Boy games. Game Boy Advance, Game Boy, and Game Boy Color. There we go, make sure I said everything. I don't know if I did or not. So, so you don't really need to install this other one. I, I was testing this one, but this pretty much covers everything, and it's it's great. It's fine. And when it comes to GameCube, you got Dolphin. That's your choice, and it also plays Wii games. It works great. All right, NES um, or Famicom. Messen is um, sort of a compromise between speed and accuracy, and it's well, it's my favorite core. It's, it works really well. So for all your NES needs, Messen. If you want to check out Nestopia, you can. It's um, it's fine. I mean, they're, they're both, they both work fine. For Nintendo 64, Parallelei, or is it Parallelei? This one is more accurate, and Mupin is faster. And there's lots of different Mupin cores out there. Like, there's some of them that have, uh, that are really fast, that'll even work on Raspberry Pi. So if you're on like a Raspberry Pi, or if you're using a SinPi or something like that, you want to use Mupin 64 next. And uh, if you can find if you can find Mupin 64 Rice, that is the fastest to use on a lot of these devices. But it's not even needed here. We just have Mupin 64 next, and we have a lot of options that we can configure there. So if you need speed, Mupin. Accuracy, parallel. Yes, and that's pretty much it. Now let's talk about Super Nintendo. There's really one core to rule them all right now, and that's SNES 9X. It did not always used to be this way. Uh, you know, BeastNES and Hygen were seen as being the ones that were more accurate. However, SNES 9X is so fast, and even the developer behind Hygen just says, use the current core of SNES 9X now, because a lot of the stuff that was in Hygen that made it like, you know, clock accurate and all that kind of stuff. A lot of that's in SNES 9X. And it's, on paper, it's not as accurate as even BeastNest or whatever. It's not as perfect, but it runs so fast and it also has lower input lag. And that's a huge deal for me when playing games like Metroid and Mario and stuff where you need accurate timing. The SNES 9X core feels better. Now, if you want to play with something that's completely accurate, you can go all the way back and get like the Beast Nest accuracy. I think I like the Mercury Core best. And then if you want to play um, hacked ROMs that are widescreen, like you can get a widescreen copy of Zelda, don't do it, it looks like garbage. <laughs> like really don't do it. It like, there's like weird stuff floating on the right and left of the screen. You can get a super, like a widescreen version of Super Mario World and some other games. That one looks okay. And you can also get a widescreen version of Metroid. But in order to use those uh, hacked ROMs, you need BeastNest HD. So there's BeastNest HD beta. That's the only thing I use BeastNest for, is only for my hacked ROMs that run in widescreen. For everything else, I use SNES 9X. All right, Pico, if you wanna play some Pico games, there are a billion Pico games. If somebody knows of a good Pico game, please let me know, cause I wanna play it. I've tried like a hundred Pico 8 games and I just, they're okay. Some of them are just fun, funny. So Quake, I recommend playing Quake um, using a source port 
outside of here, and I've made a video on how to play Quake uh, using Vulcan. So, Scum VM for all your Scum VM games. Those are like all the LucasArts games, the LucasArts adventure games like Full Throttle and Monkey Island and and all that kind of stuff. So when it comes to Dreamcast, unfortunately the best core for Dreamcast is not available in Retroarch because it is a closed source core. Uh, it's called ReDream. So if you are very serious about playing all of the uh, Dreamcast games, ReDream as a separate download and a separate thing completely outside of Retroarch, which sucks, it's gonna be the best. But if you have a beefy computer, Flycast. I believe this is based on Rycast, but this is the Libretro core, so that'll work just fine. And this works with most games, especially if you, have a, if you have a beefier system. But if your system's a little slower, you know, Redream is quite nice. Okay, when it comes to Sega Genesis and 32X and Sega CD and everything that went into that conglomeration of stuff, uh, Mega Drive, Mega CD, uh, and I don't know what they call the 32X outside of America, I forget. But anyway, if you're going to be playing those, you need two emulators. Uh, the first is Genesis Plus GX, and that one is, that's the best emulator, but it doesn't support all of the 32X and, and Sega CD games. So in order to play those, you'll need Pico Drive. So those are the two that you need. Pico Drive I found is good for most games, especially if you have a beefy computer, but this is more compatible, has less audio clipping and stuff like that. So just use Genesis Plus GX. If there's any issue, switch over to Pico Drive. Little freaks of nature don't stand a chance. Give it up. When it comes to Saturn, uh, just get Beetle Saturn. That's the one you need. Also, it's nice and fast, and it works with Vulcan. So, yeah, Beetle Saturn is the one. You can turn on, like, CRT if you have a CRT to plug this into. Turn on the CRT switches, and it'll work just fine. I've got a nice CRT, and it works great. Um, Sharp X68000. PX68K. It's the only one, really. Uh, I have not played the ZX Spectrum, but there's not a lot of options for it. Now, if you want to play Neo Geo games and stuff, you got Neo CD. Um, I play a lot of these with the um, with just Final Burn Neo, but there is a benefit to playing with a Neo Geo emulator as far as all your Neo Geo games go, and that is that uh, the, you can change it into console mode, and a lot of times that'll change the way the game works, uh, give you access to different things, give you access to options when it comes to violence and finishing moves and just stuff like that. So, you know, you can download this one too if you want to. And if you want to play the Neo Geo Pop Pocket, the uh, Beetle Neo Pop is the way to go for that. PlayStation. So if you're uh, going to be playing PlayStation games and you want the most accuracy, Beetle PSX. Beetle seems to be the way to go when it comes to accuracy and stuff. That's the way to go, but it does use more CPU. With some games, you have to use it, like Metal Gear Solid and stuff. If you try to play it with a different core, a lot of times the the timing is off with the, the words, the, the cutscenes kind of mess up and stuff like that, so you'll have to skip a lot of the cutscenes, which I guess a lot of people will do anyway. I don't know why you would play... Metal Gear for the gameplay because it's terrible. <laughs> but the cutscenes, I kind of don't you watch it for the cheesy dialogue. I don't know why people play games, but you can play them any way you want. Anyway, if you need another core, then uh, PCSX Rearmed. And then for PlayStation 2, PCSX2 works great. There's also a PCSX3 out there floating around. It's not here, and it also doesn't support save states. So I end up playing a lot of the PS2 games anyway over the PS3 games. That's just me. But PCSX2 works great. For the PlayStation Portable, there's only the PPSSPP, which uh, uh, spells pss, pss, pss. That's the sound that you make when you want to scare a cat to death. Anyway, it works totally fine. It's it's demanding, so if you're going to be playing this on a Raspberry Pi, no, you're not. <laughs> Even on the Zenpai, it's too demanding. The PlayStation Portable games were just too much for a lot of the smaller stuff out there. And then I don't really mess around with this. And again, a wolf, I played that separately outside of outside of here. So that is my assortment of cores. Now note that if you have you know, one of these cores, um, if you load them up and they don't work correctly, this and, and you have your, your retro arc set to run in Vulkan, you may need to go and change the options for that individual core to run in OpenGL instead, because not all the cores support Vulkan. So sometimes before you freak out and be like, what's wrong, why does it keep crashing? Just check and see if RetroArch is set to Vulkan in your video options, or if it's set to OpenGL. And you can set that on each individual core. So uh, if they work in Vulkan, great. You'll be good to go, and it's usually faster and better. But OpenGL is still a, a you know a good, um, it's, it's still a good API. So 
Either one's going to work just fine. Let me know if you have any cores that are your favorites, but I think this is a good guide to, to get people up and running and to remove some of the confusion. And I'm going to put all these on techsyndicate.com in a nice list so that you can go on there and just see each one that I recommend. But if you just follow along with this video and click on the ones that I have the little hash mark on, you know, on the screen, if you just click on those and install them, you will be on your way to having plenty of fun. If you've got your games here, I've just got my history. I've been playing these games. If you want, you can right click on the game, click on edit, and then you can tell it which core to open with every time, or you can tell it to ask you. By default, they're going to ask you like, hey, which core do you want to use? But now I've, I've told this one, every time you open, you open with BSNES HD Beta. So that one's, that's a special rule for that game because all my other Super Nintendo games are opening up with SNES 9X. So that's how that's going to work. Thanks to everybody who picked up the album. We were number one on uh, Bandcamp for like three or three and a half days, almost four days. So thanks very much to taking us to the top of the chiptune listings. Been getting a really positive response from this. Hope everyone enjoys it. And if you haven't purchased it yet, well, by God, what are you waiting for? You can also listen to it on Spotify or whatever other platform you want to. But the best way to get it is over on Bandcamp. You can get FLAC, you can get AAC, you can get, you know, Vorbis Og, whatever you want. So head over there and grab it. There it is. No, go, leave. Oh, yes, there we go. See, thanks very much, everybody who picked it up. A few people so far. And uh, that's pretty much the end of the video. See you in the comments. Let me know if you have specific issues, questions, uh, or whatever, or if you want to do like a deep dive on one type of emulation, or if you want to talk about the CRT shaders that I recommend to make the game look more like it did when we played it uh, back in the day. Which, if, you know, if you're and if you're too young to remember CRTs, each pixel had a little blur around it because that's the way they worked, and they weren't pixels back then. You know, the scan lines were not pixels, so it didn't look as jaggy as you see it on your LCD. It actually looked a little smoother, and there's some things you can do to emulate the way it ran, and I've got a pretty good way to do that without losing a lot of um, a lot of FPS. So, anyway, let me know what you think in the comments. Let me know what videos you'd like to see next about emulation and um, or old hardware, whatever. See you later.